In this video, we're going to discuss Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law gives the magnitude and direction of the force of one charged particle on another charged particle. This is the mathematical form of Coulomb's Law. So we have a force. Remember that force is a vector because it has a magnitude and a direction. So five newtons, for example, in the x hat direction or the i hat direction. Uh, so the subscript here one and two represents the two charges that are being that are a part of this force interaction. So what this says is that I'm looking at the force due to particle one on particle two. Right? So particle two, which we'll call Q2, so Q is our generic variable for charge. Charge has units of coulombs, C here, just like mass has units of kilograms, charge has units of coulombs. So we represent a particle, a charged particle here, as a generic Q1 and Q2. So we have two charged particles, which each have some amount of charge on them. And we're looking at the force on Q2 due to Q1, and we write that here as F12. So charge one is creating the force here, and charge two is experiencing that force. So we're always gonna be looking for the force on the second index here, in this case, Q2. Okay, this uh, force is equal to K, which is just Coulomb's constant. Coulomb's constant is uh, given by the value 8.99 times 10 to the ninth, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And this simply sets the strength of the force. It allows us to turn an equation that depends on Q, so these are charges, and a distance into something that has units of force. Okay, so Coulomb's constant is just a universal constant. It's experimentally measured uh, constant, always going to be there. Okay. Q1 and Q2 are the values of the charge of our two particles. Um, this has units of coulombs, as I said before, uh, and we simply multiply those two together in the numerator. Next, we have this R12 vector squared. So this is the square of the magnitude of the vector R12. So the vector R12 is this blue line here. It is a vector that points from the particle that is causing the force, Q1, to the particle that is experiencing the force, Q2. So this blue line here represents R12, our vector that points from the first charge to the second charge. The magnitude of that vector is simply given just simply gives the distance between the two charges. So we here are dividing by the distance between the two charges squared. And R12 hat is what's called a unit vector. The unit label on a unit vector means that it has a length of one. It in fact has no units. It doesn't carry a unit like say meters or newtons, etc., like a physics unit. The reason it's called a unit vector is because it has a length of one. And the goal of the unit vector here is simply to give the direction of the force. So all of this part of our equation here, the kq1, q2 over r squared, that gives us the magnitude of the force, and it can carry a sign. So q1 and q2 can either be positive or negative. So this part here tells us about how large the force is, and it carries a sign, uh, meaning it can either be positive or negative, depending on the relative signs of the two charges. The goal of the R12 hat here is only to tell us about the direction of the force. We don't want it to change the magnitude of this term. We only want it to tell us, well, does the force point up or to the right, etc. Shortly, we will be talking about how to actually calculate of a r hat vector here, mathematically explicitly. But for right now, I just want to kind of give you a sense of how this looks uh, 
in terms of a diagram. So R12 hat is a vector or a unit vector that points from the first charge, the charge that is causing the force, toward the second charge, except that it doesn't, it's not the entire vector here. It is simply a vector that points in the same direction as our full vector R12, but it has a length of one. Um, and the reason that it has a length of one is so that when you multiply it by this term, which tells us about the strength of our force, you don't actually change the strength of our force, right? So if I have some value here, say five newtons, if I multiply that by something that has a magnitude of one, it won't change the strength of my force. My force will still be five newtons. It will simply be five newtons in some direction. In this case, it, the direction is up and to the right. So what this tells us is that the force between charge one and charge two can point in two possible directions. Either the force can point directly away, in which case charge two is repelled by charge one, or the force can point directly toward charge two, in which case it is attracted. That is, it either points in the direction of R12 hat, or it points in the opposite direction of R12 hat. How do we know whether it points in the direction or in the opposite direction? Well, the vector negative R12 hat actually points in the direct opposite direction of the vector R12 hat. So what happens is if this whole term out front is negative, for example, if I have a positive charge and a negative charge multiplied together, this whole term will be negative. So maybe it's negative five newtons. If I multiply negative five newtons by some vector that points up and to the right, I will get a vector that points down and to the left because when I negate a vector, I will get a vector that points in the opposite direction of the original vector. We'll again see how this happens mathematically very soon. But for right now, I just wanna say there are two options for the direction of the force. Either it is repelled the force is repulsive, in which case that force points away from the charge causing the force, or you have an attractive force, which is pointing toward the charge that is causing the force. You might remember the idea uh, that opposite charges attract. So we would expect to have this attractive force if we have two opposite charges, for example, a proton and an electron. The electron should feel a force toward the proton because it is attracted to that proton. If the two charges have the same sign, that is they're both positive for example, then I would expect that this force would be repulsive. Pop protons repel other protons. So the force on this proton should be away from the other proton. To see how all of this works in practice, let's do a specific example of finding the force between two charged particles. So our setup is that we have some charge Q1 here, some charge Q2 here. The values of these charges is 10 microcoulombs for charge one and four microcoulombs for charge two. Remember that micro is 10 to the negative six. So this is 10 times 10 to the negative six coulombs uh, and four times 10 to the negative six coulombs. Um, okay, so those are our two values for the charge. The most difficult part about solving these problems is simply setting up the vectors properly. So in this case, we can draw our R12 vector is simply the vector that points from our first charge to our second charge. Now, we can find this mathematically, R12, by just simply taking the difference of R2 and R1. Now, R1 is simply the vector that points from the origin to charge one. And R2 is simply the vector that points from the origin to charge two. I'm not gonna draw it here because it would get a bit too messy because all of the lines point in the same direction, but it would go from the origin to charge two. 
And it's easy to write these vectors mathematically because they are simply the coordinates of each of the points. So R1 is simply the x coordinate of point 1, 1 in the x hat direction, plus the y coordinate of point 1, 2, and these are all, everything here is in units of meters. Um, so all of these have units of meters. Uh, so one meter in the x hat direction plus two meters in the y hat direction. Likewise, the r vector for point two is four meters in the x hat direction plus six meters in the y hat direction because it is at the point four, six, right? And, and the first particle is at the point one, two. Okay, so now in order to find the vector that points from one to two, it is simply the difference between these two vectors. Our final position minus our initial position gives us the vector that points from our starting point to our ending point. Okay, so doing our vector subtraction, we subtract the x hat components and we subtract the y hat components and we end up with three meters in the x hat direction plus four meters in the y hat direction. Now, in Coulomb's law, we need also the magnitude of this vector so we can find its magnitude by simply taking Pythagorean theorem here, and we find that the magnitude of this distance is 5 meters. Now for Coulomb's law, the other thing that we need is we need our unit vector, r12 hat. So we can find that by taking r12 vector and dividing it by its magnitude. And right now we're going to prove that by doing this, we'll get a vector that points in the same direction as R12, but has a length of 1 and no units. So the first thing we can notice is that this top has a unit, units of meters. The bottom also has units of meters, so the units cancel out here and we get a unitless quantity. Now, the next thing to note is that this is the value for our R12 vector, 3 fifths uh, x hat plus 4 fifths y hat, where there are no units on this because the units canceled out. And this, uh, we can check and see that it has a length of 1 by simply doing Pythagorean theorem and finding that that has indeed a length of 1. The direction of our vector depends only on the ratio of the x and y components. That is, for every distance, say one unit that you move in the x direction, how far in the y direction do you move? For every three units that I move in the x direction, I move four units in the y direction, just like our R12 vector. So now what we're ready to do is we're ready to take our unit vector and our magnitude along with our charges and actually calculate the force on charge 2 due to charge 1. Now we can take our knowledge of r vector and r hat and turn it into a force on particle 2. So again we have Coulomb's law here. Plugging in our values for q, both positive plugging in our value for the magnitude of the uh, distance between the two objects and our r hat, we find that it, the force is 0 0.14 uh, newtons and this unit vector provides us with the direction. Remember the magnitude of this component here is 1, so 0 0.14 gives us the magnitude of this force and this only provides direction. This tells us that we move for every three units to the right that we move, we move four units up. Multiplying the magnitude through by the coefficients of the x and y hat components, we get a more uh, normal looking vector type of thing where we have some x hat component and some y hat component. And we can draw this vector where it has 0 0.0086 newtons in the x hat direction or i hat direction and 0 0.115 newtons in the y hat direction, which makes a vector that points up and to the right. So we can see that this vector points in the same direction as the R12 vector, 
which is the same direction as the R12 hat unit vector up and to the right. This matches our intuition because we have two positive particles which should repel one another, and this is a repulsive force that is pushing Q2 away from Q1. Now let's see what happens if we consider exactly the same setup, but we change the sign of the Q2 charge. So now we're gonna make it negative four microcoulombs instead of positive four microcoulombs. Okay. Note that this does not change R vector one, two, because R vector always points from charge one to charge two. It doesn't change the magnitude of R one, two, nor does it change R one, two hat, our unit vector. It is still three fifths X hat plus four fifths Y hat. What does change is that we now have a minus sign here for our Q2, which changes the sign of this overall force. Now we have a minus sign out front here, and as we move all the way down, we see that we get the same magnitude in X and Y hat, except that now they're both negative. And what this tells us is that instead of pointing up and to the right, where we're moving in the positive x direction and the positive y direction, our force points down and to the left. We're moving in the negative x direction and the negative y direction. What this tells us is that our force is now attractive. That is, that Q2 is now feeling a force toward Q1, which is, again, what we would expect in the case where we have two opposite charges. Those two opposite charges would attract one another, and so Q2 would feel a force in the direction of Q1. So as we said before, there are only two possible directions for this force to point. It can either point directly away from Q1 or it can directly point directly toward Q1. And now we've seen the mathematics of how we actually get that force. To finish up this example, let's look at F21, the force on particle one due to particle two. So we have returned our Q2 to being a positive four microcoulombs, so we're back to our original setup here. We remember that in this setup, F12, the force on Q2 due to Q1, points up and to the right. Uh, and what we would expect is that we would get an equal and opposite force on Q1, so that Q1 would feel a force down and to the left, away from the charge two, right? This looks like equal and opposite forces. All right, so when we're dealing with uh, F21, what we're gonna have is R21, magnitude of the R21 vector, and then R21 hat. Now let's see how our vector R21 and the unit vector R21 hat change from the R12 case that we looked at before. So R21 is the vector that points from charge two to charge one. It points down and to the left. It must have the same magnitude as R12 because it simply represents the distance. The magnitude of this vector simply represents the distance between these two particles, which has not changed. So this leads us to the conclusion that the R12 magnitude must be equal to the magnitude of R21. That is, each of these just represent the distance between these two particles. That has not changed. The thing that has changed is the direction. R12 pointed from Q1 to Q2, points up and to the right. This vector points down and to the left. This direction has simply flipped, and how do we flip the direction of a vector? We simply multiply it by negative one. That is to say that R12 hat is equal to the negative of R21 hat, or vice versa, we could say that the negative of R12 hat is equal to R21 hat. This is how we flip the direction of a vector from pointing up and to the right to pointing down and to the left at exactly the same angle. Okay, so now if we look at our force equation here, our the uh, distance between the two particles, our R21 vector is still five meters squared, just like we found before. But now our unit vector, R21 hat, I've applied a minus sign to both the X hat and Y hat components. 
Now it points in the negative x direction and the negative y direction, which is down and to the left, just as we expect. Okay, carrying this uh, through, notice that our magnitude has not changed. Uh, only the direction has changed, and we end up with a force F21, which points down and to the left. Putting this all together, what we find is that F21 has an equal magnitude and opposite direction to F12 for this situation. And that is going to always be true. The force on one particle is going to be equal and opposite to the force on another particle. This goes back to Newton's third law, right? Equal and opposite forces. If I push on you with some force, you push on me with an equal and opposite force. And that's what these charges are experiencing. Q2 is being repelled from Q1. Q1 is being repelled from Q2.